Well, Jared, welcome to the journey. And um, just to just fill you in a little bit about what the journey is about. The journey is um, just ordinary people coming and talking about either um, setbacks they may have had or um, some type of struggle they may have had and how um, did they get through that struggle and what did they learn from that and then the idea of transformation as a result of that struggle. And so um, so welcome to the journey. Uh, Thanks for having me. Yeah. yeah. No problem. So, uh, so Jared, you are uh, co-owners of Rockford Art Deli, mm-hmm. which in itself has uh, gone through a bunch of transformations uh, in the last few years, yeah. and and I would love to get into that. But before we uh, jump into that, and I know you guys have uh, some uh, big seasons coming up, the getting ready to start for the summer and everything. But um, tell me a little bit about you, just as a person. Like, what do you do for fun? If you're not, because you work at, at Rad full time, right? Mm-hmm. Yes. And um, when you're not there what do you what do you do for fun uh well relax okay. meditate okay. Uh, uh pepper you know pepper our shop dog like oh, i yeah. spend yeah. as much time with her okay um outdoor activities climbing okay. hiking okay um pretty much anything that's good good for the body and, and mind okay <laughs> so you're one of the climbers so i got a, a handful of friends that are yeah. all from downtown rockford that are climbing uh and so you i didn't realize that so yeah i'm part of the, the 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 local i guess hidden climbing crew <laughs> yeah yeah so where where uh from because i know uh, friends of ours uh aaron and flan mm-hmm. they uh had a, a training uh, yep. place inside their garage yep, just there right? last week oh were you yeah. okay <laughs> all right and uh, i remember when aaron was creating that that was like uh, amazing when it's, you were telling me about that yeah garage climbing is uh quite the craze um there's actually a lot of hidden ones in rockford is there um okay. but yeah just you know you can set up a cool little diy climbing wall in your garage and okay. it's a it's a good way of connecting with friends and community community and um, the climbing culture is this really powerful sure. Uh, feeling. Sure, sure. How, how long ago did you get into climbing? When uh, I've actually climbed for since 2000. Oh, wow. Uh, okay. On and off. Uh, when I went to school in Minnesota, I actually okay. climbed every day. Okay. And then got to Rockford and there was no climbing. Sure. So right. I kind of missed out on that for a while and then okay. rekindled with, with this new new crew of guys okay. and gals. So, so if you have a, a favorite place where you've go to cl- where you been climbing, where, where was your favorite place? Or, or, um, or, I haven't done too much outdoor climbing, but Devil's Lake's really good. Oh, okay. Um, indoor climbing wise, though, we go to like Chicago suburbs. Um, Brooklyn Boulders okay. is, is one of our top places gotcha. we go. Okay. So even when you were up in Minnesota where you got started, was that indoor climbing as well? Yeah, yeah, okay. indoor climbing. It's just easier, you know, to climb by uh, indoor than it is to get all the gear to go outdoor. Sure, sure. And I imagine then it's, is it as dependent on having somebody with you if you're doing. Depending every- on if you're bouldering or climbing, yeah. But okay. if you're just bouldering, you can go anywhere by yourself. If you're actually like top rope climbing, you need, you know, rope and someone to blay you and a little more it's a little more dangerous yeah so so regardless if it's indoor or outdoor you still need that partner to go with you and that's where that community piece comes yes in. yes okay. yeah well good it's the com- camaraderie and yeah there's the friendship that you build with with okay. climbing you know I, um, I had a friend of mine well you might know Jason Todd mm-hmm. right so he, Jason told me a story and I probably won't get it exactly right but he talked about how um, he was uh, not liking heights for, for the longest time didn't like heights I think it was more about not wanting to fall in, in, in the landing that's, part that's of the falling. That's a scary thing, right? yeah. <laughs> and, um, and he talked about the difference between uh, two individuals on the edge of a, a, a cliff or edge of uh, some kind of landing, and w- what's the difference between the one that was um, was comfortable there and the one that wasn't, and it was that fear of falling. Mm-hmm. And, and he talked about the only way that he was going to overcome that was by practicing climbing. And I thought about that, and it makes complete sense. You know, as a as a counselor, you're not ever going to get over um, a fear of heights by talking about it. There's just no way. Just got to get after it. Yeah, <laughs> you have to actually experience what yeah. it's like to be off the ground and know you're off the ground. Right. And, and I would think, as long as you're being safe. Um, you can experience that. It's still a scary thing. You know, like even indoor, you know, you're 60 feet in the air mm-hmm. on a rope with the harness around your waist and you're hoping that it's going to hold you. Yeah. You know that it will. Yeah. Um, but still, it's a scary thing. of, And then someone holding you, you know, their your life's in their hands. Right. Um, so right. it's a very big trust component, component involved with it. Sure. So I could see how there could be a lot of it's, benefits. Of yeah. I mean, even though, you're, you know, you're up at the top and you're there and you're feeling safe, but then you look down. 
and then you start overthinking and okay. you know, thinking of the worst possible things that could happen. But uh, I think it's the adrenaline. You know, it's definitely an adrenaline sport, so okay. it's it helps. Um, but up 60 feet in the air is scary. It's still 60 feet. In the yeah. Air. Any still, way you look at it. Yeah. Right? <laughs> even 10 feet in the air, like, is still scary. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So you went to you went to college in Minnesota. Uh, I did a one year tech school okay. um, in Minneapolis, like outside of Minneapolis, and okay. I did actually computer networking. So oh. I used to be an IT guy. Oh, really? <laughs> for okay. a very long time. Okay. Um, that was kind of my uh, high school through, yeah, later in life, and okay. um, that's kind of where I, I started, okay. and that progressed to a lot of different types of jobs and sure. careers and okay. learning experiences. Now, high school was where? Where was high school? Uh, Byron High School. Oh, okay. So yep. you graduated from Byron. Yep, graduated from Byron. Yeah. And uh, siblings? Uh, uh, I have a sister. Yeah, I have an older sister. Um, she lives in Texas. Okay. Um, and, um, yeah, she's she works on an Air Force base. Okay. Uh, doing very well for herself okay. and her husband. They live on a farm, so she's, okay. you know, got cows and chickens and okay. horses and random animals. Okay. Now, is she, is she military? or is She's she, not. She's a civilian. Yeah. Civilian. Yeah. But she's been in there. I think she's posted that t- over twelve years. Oh wow. As okay. civilian. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. And your mom and dad still live in Byron area. Uh, my mom lives in um, the German Valley area. My oh, dad okay. passed away before, like six years, seven years ago. Oh, okay. Yeah. Sorry to hear that. Yeah. How, how did he? Uh, how did he heart attack. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. So that would have made him how old? Uh, sixty. I think he was around sixty. Okay. Yeah, Real young. Yeah. Very young. Okay. Well, I'm sorry. It was. Did he have heart heart issues? up until that point? Yeah, or? it wasn't a the best scenario. Smoking and drinking, you know, okay. don't really help with the heart. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, it's amazing. I, um, I went to, uh, uh, years ago, I took a tour of a um, cath lab, mm-hmm. and they had never been any kind of experience like that. And they talked about that, and I had always thought of, because we have a, a long history of cardiac disease on my, my, my mom's side of the family, and I always thought that diet was kind of the worst thing for your heart, and, mm-hmm. and obviously is a major helps, contributor. Yeah. But um, this doctor um, talked about, um, this cardiologist talked about how Smoking is much worse for your heart than um, than even you know you know poor diet, mm-hmm. just because of what it does to the um, cardiovascular system. Yeah, and um, and I always thought, well, it affects your lungs, but not about the cardiovascular, but because all the different um, toxins that are in cigarettes, yeah. primarily cigarettes. Yeah, it's pretty much just um, poison in a little it, little stick. <laughs> exactly, and and because people who smoke have a tendency, they just don't smoke one cigarette. Yeah, it's very addictive. They're smokers. Yeah, yeah luckily so. it's not as popular these days as it used to be. It, it is amazing. I I did a talk. Not, not that long ago about and um it was amazing how uh, how much that's tr- changed 80 85 percent of the population smoked in the 50s yeah. and now it's because the marble man's gone yeah it doesn't look cool anymore <laughs> exactly exactly so so you went to minnesota mm-hmm. um for tech school then mm-hmm. you came back to rockford area? yeah so i graduated i graduated high school in 2000 okay. um right when i was getting out of the tech school is when 9 11 happened oh. so the job market kind of wasn't higher you know it wasn't as uh popular anymore so yeah. everything was kind of on a lockdown um so i ended up moving back to to byron and okay. lived with my mom and dad and okay uh yeah i'm just you know trying to figure out. i was like well at least this is safe i can go back and you know okay. can get a little helping hand while i'm trying to figure out life and okay. uh um i pretty immediately got jobs locally doing you know it work and okay. um where did i go after that i think after that i ended up at um zoomies so i actually opened the zoomies in rockford oh, did i was you? one of the first crew that got that thing running okay so i was a store manager there for about three years so okay. that kind of helped me get my retail roots okay. um and kind of with you know great customer service they were really known for that very much yeah. uh, so that kind of helped gear me towards you know where i'm at today okay um just little little chunks okay so obviously zoomies um especially back then when it first came was uh, i don't know if you called a specialty shop but it was it's very specialty yeah, yeah. It was online online sales weren't as big um, you know, everyone actually came to the shop by skateboard, snowboard. Um, you know, we did have good local shops too. We had um, the station and ski rack, and um, but it was you know a different vibe. Uh, but it was 
was super fun. Yeah. Uh, you know, they, they treated the employees very well, a lot of contests, uh, a lot of travel. Um, so it was, a, it was a great company to work for. Um, I don't know what it's like now. You know, yeah. it's usually things change and True. progress. And, yeah. uh, but no, it was definitely a good stepping stone okay. and we had life lessons for me. Yeah. So when you think of the, your experience at Zoomies, what would be like a couple things that you most took out of that that you think you brought over to um, Rockford Art Deli? Let's say customer service was the number one, you know, okay. giving attention to every person that walked in the door, um, you know, and genuine, not just a used car salesman kind of vibe. Mm-hmm. Uh, just the connections and the, the um, morale, uh, the team morale, everyone was very excited to work together and it was very fast paced, high energy. Mm-hmm. Um, it's kind of how I am all the time. Sure. Uh, so it's just helped learning, you know, to run a store. It's It was just easier then because it wasn't my money. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> you know, payroll, uh, uh, spoiled shirts, uh, theft, like none of that was was my pocket. So it's, right. it's definitely different when you own your own business because everything's out of your pocket. Right. Oh, uh, yeah, a lot definitely. more emotion involved when it's when it's your money, yeah. not someone else's money. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I uh, agree. But no, I would say just the like, ev- overall processes and how they ran the business in general, their core values. Just it was all it all helped me kind of get excited about wanting to do some more sort of retail in my in okay. future. You know, it's interesting when you talk about. I remember going to Zoomies and bringing uh, my son there because he was into skateboarding when he was younger and it and I didn't necessarily, I wouldn't have used those words, but now reflecting back on it, it very much was an experience. Mm-hmm. It, once you walk through, you cross that threshold, you, it was it was definitely an experience. Yeah. And um, and I think that it's very similar to one uh, down at Rockford Art Deli. It's, it's very much, I remember the first time I drove past there, um, I didn't, uh, Rockford Art Deli, what, you know. What kind of sandwiches do they have? It, well, so I, I was like, <laughs> what, what exactly is going on here? I didn't, and, um, and then I remember um, when Corbin Tyson did mm-hmm. his um, premiere. Yeah, the Fallout Project. Yeah, yeah. And, that was, and that was the first time that I'd actually spent time okay. at Rockford Art Deli. Um, and Corbin and I have been friends for a long time, so that was a pretty cool evening. Yeah. The, yeah, it's, that was a, the whole premise of Rockford Art Deli was to create an experience. Mm-hmm. Um, creating t-shirts is cool. Yeah. Um, it's easy, like, you know, in the grand scheme of things, like creating a t-shirt, anyone can do at their house in their basement. Right. Um, but I wanted people to be involved and to interact and to see it happen you know right. I, everyone likes to see how things are made sure uh, you know we don't it's not a normal everyday thing you get to see how shirts are made or how cars made or how paintings made um, so it's just fun to be a part of it and to actually see it happen right. so our, we're one of the only print shop retail spaces that are this kind of style mm-hmm. um, you know there's smaller scale ones but but we we figured it out. We mm-hmm. figured out this niche that um, just pulled people in. Right, right. Okay. And it's exciting. You know, it's just fun to see people's faces, like kids, adults, grandparents. They walk by and, you know, their mind's blown because they just saw a T-shirt get made. Yeah. Uh, so it's like the, you know, one of my most joyful, I guess, parts of the thing is just seeing people be excited. They're like kind of like a little kid again, right. learning how things are made. Sure. Um, so that's the fun part of it. You know, it's interesting uh, when I think of like other places that do that it's like when you go on vacation to mm-hmm. Myrtle Beach or you go wherever that yeah. you can it's very have gimmicky touristy yeah, yeah. cheap yeah. yeah and it's and it's very much that but you the the type of product type of t-shirt that it's a much different quality mm-hmm. it's a much different experience and maybe um, and you guys do printmaking yeah which is different than silk screening yeah we don't do as much in shop anymore um, but like flat stock posters um, you know reproduction of, of art like uh, Sarah Reed uh, McNamara is one of you know we've reprinted some of her her wood block prints mm-hmm. so I've scanned that turned into a screen print and then duplicated them for them it's a okay. little different process okay. uh, but yeah mostly I say mostly now t-shirts I've been trying to focus on what our niche is instead mm-hmm. of offering a million things right. you know it's going to a restaurant and getting a 20 page menu sure. and you're wondering how they make all of them really good yeah. um, I like to have a very small menu and okay. say that we do these you know handful of things really really good okay so then you so right now mostly you focus on t-shirts t-shirts yep. is the is yeah t-shirts is the, the the main thing and and we do so we we're, we're kind of two businesses in one um so we're retail mm-hmm. so you walk in buy a, a rad t-shirt um, but then we do custom printing and that's what i've been doing for 15 years mm-hmm. so schools businesses bands events okay. um that's that's kind of where i started okay. um let's say 70 percent of our business though now is walk-in okay. so just people coming out on the streets to buy a t-shirt okay uh which is never would have thought in a million years that that would be a thing okay. uh so it's kind of fun because 
you um, you know margins are a little better mm-hmm. on, on creating our own goods and you get to kind of be more selective with your clientele right. uh, so you don't have to deal with you know the the, the ups and downs of, of custom work sure, sure. Um, but that's still kind of you know our main our main focus is still working with local businesses and, okay. and schools and bands and trying to help you know give back okay. uh, but yeah so it's, it's it's very complex in in the back end of how the two businesses work together okay all right so, so tell us a little bit about so you wanted you, you took a lot of things that you learned Learn from Zoomies and other different experiences like that, and and then you had a company before Rad, mm-hmm. and and so tell us a little bit about that and what that experience was like. And so yeah, so I actually started um, Boarded Up Productions was my original company, and I did video production, uh, so extreme sports. So I did a full length wakeboard video. Um, okay. It was called Mullet Mayhem. Okay. Uh, I traveled around for a whole summer and filmed wakeboarders all in the Midwest, um, some in Florida, uh, but mostly all Midwest riders. So mm-hmm. some pros that moved to Florida I went down and filmed them and um, that kind of kickstart my entrepreneur um, lifestyle okay uh, yeah so I lived in my mom's basement I did all my video editing and stuff down there um, but it was incredible probably one of, the, one of the best summers of my life because you just met new people every weekend sure. that were excited about the sport they were in and just had fun you know it wasn't I went to some competitions but it was mostly like their you know boathouse their lake their river wherever they were at so it was their kind of vibe uh, so I started doing that and was going to do more extreme sports and then realized that it's very expensive to make videos um, and you don't make a lot of money back on yeah. them unless you're a pro or have you know uh, deeper roots in the community Right. Uh, but would never, you know, replace that. It was, it was so fun. So, how old were you about that time? Um, Mid twenties. Okay. Yeah. And so during the week you were working. Yeah, I worked IT job. IT you job. Know, full time, and then on the weekends would travel. Okay. You know, kind of like Superman style. I'd change into my board shorts and my video camera, and, okay. and go sit on a boat for a weekend. And okay. And I don't want to use the word party, but um, it was kind of a party. Sure. Like every weekend was a party. Sure. Yeah. Sure. And then getting to meet new people all the time. Yeah. And yeah. doing what they loved, mm-hmm. and so that must have been. And yeah, capturing and, and you know in their love, like yeah. capturing them in their moment, doing what they love. Okay, and I'm guessing just by the way you describe it, you were funding this all. Oh yeah, yeah. everything was self. Every, my whole life has been self funded. Everything's yeah. been out of okay. pocket, and okay. yeah. So so that's where, and that's where we sometimes learn. Even mm-hmm. though we love doing it, we're passionate about doing it. We have a great experience doing it. Then when we you know, we look at all right, what's the return on this? Yeah. Um, um, it was like, ooh, well, we may have to be selected before we do that. Yeah, again. and I think the return on those were, were experiences and memories. Yeah. You know, I, I don't think I was ever in it to make money. Okay. Um, I mean, that's you always want to, you know, like, oh, I'll be the next video, yeah. the next video guy. Um, but I think it was just the experience. You know, I was mm-hmm. at a good point in life that I was able to travel, able to enjoy, have fun, mm-hmm. no, you know, not any big responsibilities. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think those those lessons were just total experience, you know, okay. memories and experiences. Gotcha. And so that was mid 2000s right yeah 2000 early 2000s yeah okay and then after that you're still working IT during the week still IT during the week and then and what was what was kind of the next so the evolution? screen printing became the next thing I got really excited about making t-shirts because okay. um, I saw it at events and I was like oh maybe this is my next thing okay uh, so wrote a business plan went to a local bank in Byron said hey I want to start a company um, ordered all of my equipment actually from uh, my good friend now Ryan uh, he owns Ryan at uh, out in Vancouver, Washington. So I actually bought my first setup from him when he first started his business, and we've been really good friends for okay. 15 years now. Uh, but yeah, just ordered all the equipment and was like, okay, I figure it out. Okay. So just started figuring it out. Okay. Never took a class, never, um, okay. you know, YouTube wasn't really around then, like uh, there was, but not like as much now. Sure. So it was just trial and error, messing up shirts and okay. trying to figure out how to make money. Interesting. Uh, so yeah, so that was um, 2004. Okay. Around 2004-ish when I got that started, right. and then just now, yeah, now it's t-shirts everywhere. <laughs> so, so then, now what was the name of the co- that was that was boarded up productions. But, oh, so that still yep. was the same as a video. Yep, and then that eased into Pirate Ninja Print Shop. <laughs> okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. So you went from it being production company, mm-hmm. and then as that started tapering off, then um, just the t-shirts kind of flowed into that. Okay. Um, so then that was really like very on the side, like you know. But then it became full time, full time. Like so, I had a full time job, and then would do all nighters and print all 
night, you know, to, to get those done and then go back to the IT job in the day. So it was a lot of flipping kind of mindsets every day. Okay. So when, yeah, tell us a little bit about the experience of at some point, right, mm -hmm. it, the, the full-time IT, which is actually how you're getting paid. Yep. And that's steady money, Correct. right? And and then, but now this thing with the t-shirts is building, building some momentum. Yeah. Tell us about making that leap because that had to be a little scary. Yeah. So um, before Rad opened, I actually worked at Field Fastener in oh, town as, yeah. a, as an IT guy. Yeah. Um, so I was there for a few years and, um, you know, still running my business full time on the side mm -hmm. and doing that full time. Uh, and then the salon was getting ready to go out uh, below us where we're at now. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, we should get a retail spot. Um, we kind of had some little things going before that, doing like uh, some different fairs and just with different Rockford style shirts. Um, I think when we originally started, they're actually a little more campy and um, not negative, but more poking fun at Rockford. And, you know, because it was an easy thing to do, okay. um, you know, in 2011, okay. uh, around that time. Uh, and then I didn't like that vibe. I, I felt like we should be more positive and pushing positivity. Okay. Uh, cause it's so easy to get caught up in negativity. Mm -hmm. And if people are complaining, you know, it's easy to get sucked into that world and then right. you start complaining and right. it's a whole mindset thing. Uh, so we started doing positive. I was like, let's do positive shirts, you know, just things that are promoting Rockford. Like it's, we didn't, re, we didn't invent the wheel, you know, it's yeah. people were doing it, yeah. um, in other states and cities. Mm -hmm. Uh, so it was just the opportunity was there. It was open. Uh, I put a, two month notice in at my job and uh, this was right around city market so that was kind of our debut was at city market okay. um, and while we were doing that we I was working on this build out so full time job screen printing and I was doing a full demo and rebuild. And you were physically doing some yeah. of that demo yourself. I would say 90% of it I did by myself. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I definitely had friends, and but it was all, you know, it was very low budget. I didn't have a, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it was just whatever I made that week. Okay. <laughs> uh, okay. So built out the store and, you know, demoed it. And luckily, you know, I have a good friend network and helps, you know, cleaning and painting and pulling nails. And okay. uh, yeah, so it was a, a very long, expensive start, but I did it in two months. Oh, wow. So we had okay. a full demo. On a about two months and then had our grand opening in September. Okay. So going back to making the decision to mm. make that, take that leap, because now you're going from the steady paycheck, mm -hmm. right, to even though the business had been part time, it, it, it had started gaining some momentum, but now all your eggs are going to be in this basket. What, what was that like? Uh, I'm kind of a just jump into things kind okay, of guy. Okay, okay. Um, I definitely mentally was thinking about the, you know, like that paycheck just shows up all the time and it's great. Um, <laughs> but we, so, you know, I already had an established business that was doing okay. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it wasn't definitely a full time like salary, mm -hmm. uh, but it was definitely moving. Mm -hmm. You know, we were, we were making money and um, I don't know if I was actually making money because I didn't really know how to do bookkeeping and stuff then. Mm -hmm. uh, but it was, it was in the right direction and, you know, we, we already had a good community in the area of our community uh so it was really scary and um but i figured why not try it sure uh so it and it was like an instant i wouldn't say instant success but just the the love from rockford back on us just made me kind of like powered me up okay. uh you know just our grand opening i still can remember it. it was you know i had like eight different shirts in there okay we had two a couple of racks and like a few different shirts and it just like our shop was empty. You know, now we don't have any room in the shop. But yeah. I don't really remember being scared doing like doing the switch. Like, okay. I think it was just like a natural progression. Okay. Um, you know, Brittany was already doing full time shop stuff, so she was like the first full time employee. Okay. Um, while I was doing everything, you know, the, the full time job and all that, okay. so she was getting all the stuff ready for me when I got home, and then I'd print them. Oh, all right. Okay. So yeah, so it was uh, so I had like the during the day kind of things happening. So she, so she, Brittany is, is your partner, mm -hmm. right? and um, and so she, for her, part of part of her role was to be getting everything ready for the retail end of things. Uh, so this was before the retail. Oh, but yeah. The, oh, um, so she was getting all the commercial. Oh, like the, the commercials. Yeah. Okay. And then you know, obviously, still doing all the the retail things too. But okay. Um, I'm sure, like thinking back now, it's like way easier then. You know, we only had a few different designs that we had to figure out and it wasn't as uh, big of a moving moving parts as it is okay. now. Okay. Uh, but yeah, so everything would get ready and then I would get home 
you know, at 5.30 and turn on the dryer and start printing things. Okay. Um, which was, you know, interesting because it was, yeah, I don't even remember. It must have just blacked out for a few months and it just <laughs> happened. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Well, and I remember, I know for me, when I've made those transitions to different jobs um, and, and, you know, having having a wife and who was a stay-at-home mom mm-hmm. and, and two kids, there when I made my major um, steps into those areas, either leaving um, the school system I was working at to jump into doing full-time clinical practice Mm -hmm. or when I left that practice to open up KP Counseling, there was this... um, uh, I knew it was the right thing to do, um, so there was never a doubt about those things. But it was all those. How is this going to work? I mean, yeah, I don't think I ever thought about that. Okay, I think yeah. I just knew that. I think just for my work ethic and and growing up, you know, like my mom and dad worked full time jobs, mm-hmm. you know, all the time. Still had everything done at the house, and you know, took care of us. And uh, I don't think I ever had a, a doubt that it wouldn't work. Okay. Um, I just knew that somehow it would happen. Okay. You know, it's kind of that, well, you know, paycheck to paycheck, I guess, mentality of like, well, I know it's going to be there somehow. The harder I work, you know, more more things will happen. Yeah. So where do you, so the work ethic piece mm-hmm. and the self-discipline, obviously that's a big part of what I'm hearing you say. Yeah. And that's and that was a big part of what you had confidence and faith in. Mm-hmm. And um, where do you think that came from? Where? Oh, I was still in my parents. Okay. So yeah. tell us about uh, uh, It was just, you know, I think all they did was work work and okay. uh, everything we did you know at the house um, was all done by my dad or you know my mom like everything we didn't hire things out you know because it was you know it was definitely a paycheck to paycheck you know I was a I had a normal childhood I guess okay. um, just worked hard and you know I had started working when I was like 14 okay. uh, painting and mowing and um, so I had that oh I can make money and buy things yeah, yeah. you know I was like this, this is cool yeah. uh, so I think I got that work ethic very early but my mom was a workaholic and you know she worked 50 60 hours a week what she do um then she was where was she at then i think she was either in the food industry or she used to run the old county jail's kitchen oh okay um for i think she's retired so like 20 yeah 20 plus years okay um so yeah so she for Ogle county old county yeah okay All right. so yeah so she ran that so it was just a non-stop kind of thing and then come home and cook and so yeah it was just a non-stop kind of uh workload and then what did dad do uh he was a food salesman cisco foods oh okay so yeah so he he sold that stuff so yeah you know i guess i had like the work ethic the the sales mentality in my my childhood all the time so i kind of saw that happening and if your dad did sale there was an element of you had to do some hustle you, yep. had, you had to push and mm-hmm. and you can't rely on what you did last month it doesn't guarantee right. what you're going to do it's definitely a commission month. based kind of vibe the harder you work the more money you make yeah. and then mom obviously she just had to put her t- the amount of energy and mm-hmm. time she had to just put into it yeah. helped her have a career in that correct yeah so you got to see both of those was mm-hmm. your sister the same way oh uh, yeah she's definitely a go-getter i mean even now like she's got her full-time job and then runs a full-time farm okay which yeah. i have no i thought i was busy <laughs> listening to what she has to do like birth calves and chase chickens and find horses and yeah like i, I have no idea <laughs> yeah it's a little bit different than retail totally different than retail yeah, yeah. i uh, i like what i do <laughs> so so this idea of uh, so going back to the idea of uh, just a belief and understanding and experience of this work ethic and similar to when you were out and um, first graduated and 9-11 happened Mm -hmm. your interest was in IT you were you were in the front end of that Mm -hmm. or pretty much on the front end of that Um, so it wasn't like everyone knew how to do everything it still was new Um, and and so but there was also this idea of uh, the entrepreneur wanting to wanting to have and do something more the when you first talked about the wakeboarding and that particular that that production company Mm -hmm. And um, and so, but you but you also wanted to give back, and I'm interested in making that switch. And yeah, yeah. it's like you said, it's easy, and it's um, there, there's an element. It's 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 like um, being able to gossip, right? Yeah. You know, talking negative about yep. something is easy to get fans to do that. Correct. But it, it's short lived, right? Yeah, it's uh, it's definitely a short lived. You know, like negativity only goes so far. Right. Negativity doesn't make change. 
Right. Um, negativity doesn't fix people. Yeah. Um, it, you know, it's it's toxic. Mm-hmm. It's uh, I don't know. It's kind of a disease in a way. Like mm-hmm. I don't know. It could be a disease. Negativity could be. A disease. Yeah, and I think starting rad like. I didn't realize how powerful it would be, Mm -hmm. um, how powerful of change, how powerful um, people would take to it. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, I was like, oh, I'm going to... I'm an entrepreneur. I need to make some money. I'm gonna like print cool T-shirts, and people will buy them. Yeah. Um, and then you know they'll buy other stuff. They'll order T-shirts for their family reunion or their business. Mm-hmm. Um, I n- never in a million years would have thought the impact that we would create now, mm-hmm. um, and where it would lead me in life. Um, I guess transitioning a little to to that we make our own T-shirts. Mm-hmm. Um, we actually so we print them, but we actually are oh, yeah. one of ten yeah. founders in cutting and sewing the T-shirt like that I'm wearing now. Okay. Uh, so in each T-shirt, there's six recycled plastic water bottles um, okay. that get pulled out before they go in you know landfill in the US um, 25% organic US cotton and 25% model which is a beech tree okay. um, so all that's done in the US and then shipped to Haiti to a high living wage facility um, where they get paid minimum like three to five times their normal day rate okay. and um, the profits of the facility in Haiti all go to the orphans um, so the companies go X out of Kansas City started the global orphanage project okay. um, so it's kind of this bigger picture um, We've been this is coming on three years now, uh, so it's just a huge impact. The, the t-shirt industry is the second most pollutant in the world under oil um, because of the pesticides used, the, the water it takes to make one t-shirt. A conventional t-shirt's uh, I think 700 gallons of water, you know, to grow the cotton, to produce it, to dye it, Interesting. Um, and just the pesticides used in shirts and crude oil from transporting back and forth, you know, overseas. Uh, So that was this huge, like, oh, we can make change. Um, So now the cool part is all of our customers, you know, a lot of people don't think they can make change because they're like, oh, I can't make change, it's just me, I'm one person. Um, They just bought a t-shirt that helped make change. And they don't even know it. You know, they're wearing this T-shirt that they don't even. We, you know, we promote well and, and we tell people the story, but most people don't know that they're impacting lives by wearing this this T-shirt. Sure, sure. So it's not just what the T-shirt says, mm-hmm. but it's everything about. It's a full. It's a full circle T-shirt. Okay. Um, and we promote. We don't promote the the kids. Um, I'm not into cause marketing. Uh, I'm not trying to make money off orphans. I'm not trying to make money off you know Haitian kids. Um, we promote the sustainability side of it, and that's kind of rad in general. We're going towards that route of becoming more sustainable, um, being more green. Um, we're trying. We're probably, I would say, the most green shop in Rockford, or the only green shop in Rockford. Okay. Um, but working on even more than that, like uh, we're working on becoming a B Corp, um, which is most people don't know what they are. Yeah. Tell, first, tell before you get to yeah. B Corp, tell us what uh, what a green shop is. Um. So for people that yeah. May not so know what that screen means. printing shops are pretty uh, not eco friendly. <laughs> uh, you know, just because the the inks. So the inks that most print shops use are called Plastisol, and they have plastic in them, okay. um, and Fafflate. So it's like these kind of toxic things that you're wearing. Um, and That's why they smell bad. But the cheaper they are the the this it's usually the, the shirt smell. the pesticides in the shirt is usually what makes the smell um so plastic is like this thick plastic you know so you think of you think of when you wear a t-shirt and you you know just go to a sporting event so you wear this t-shirt and it feels like you're wearing a, a piece of armor um because you have this big plastic chunk on your shirt yeah. uh so that's plastic that's how i started you know figured it out that's how everyone starts um and then you start looking into all the chemicals your spray adhesives things we're breathing in chemicals that we clean the screens with um and, you know, I think this was the end of my, my transition in life where I was like, I want to be healthy and I should take care of my body because if I don't have that, I don't have anything. Right, right. Uh, so we slowly, I forget what year it was, um, I think we're five years, four years ago now. Um, so kind of mid-rad, like when we opened the boutique and just get customers coming into our shop, you know, I want it to be as, as clean as possible. Um, so we made the switch to water-based inks. Um, so they're very more uh, complex to print because they dry in the screen, um, but it goes into the T-shirt. Oh, okay. um, sure. So and then with chem- we don't have to use chemicals to clean it; it's just water. Uh, it's all water soluble. It's safe to go down the drain, even though we don't put it down the drain, but it's safe. Um, chemicals we use now are all uh, biodegradable, as green as we can get. You know, so we're trying to get as green as we can get for a print shop. We'll never be 100% green. Yeah. It's almost impossible. Um, we have water filter systems that filter anything that goes down to our drain to like 0.01 microns um, before going into the water source, you know, back into the water. 
Um, so yeah, in spray adhesives, we use all web tech, or uh, web um, adhesive, or not web adhesive, uh, water-based adhesive. Um, so we're trying to use as less spray adhesive our, our uh, aerosols as possible okay. um, in the shop. So with the as you were experimenting with this, and I, mean, mm -hmm. and I imagine there was definitely experimentation. Oh, lots of experiments. Still experimenting. And so yeah. um, this is when I when I've listened to other people talk about it, they it's it's they want to do it grain, mm -hmm. but then it's it's harder to make the t-shirt. The it's harder. Ink, it's more expensive. Yeah, the yeah. ink doesn't stay on as well. Mm -hmm. It doesn't hold up as well. What what have, what was that process like of learning to because obviously your t-shirts are going to be a little bit more maybe a little bit more expensive or your mm -hmm. margin is going to be a little bit less. Yeah. So I mean it's all it's all in relative. So as you start, it's more expensive, and then now we got it dialed in, so it's not. It's sure. kind of less expensive because you're not using chemicals now to clean the ink off. Right. You know, before with a normal conventional one, you'd have to use a, you have to spray it, you know, scrub the ink, wipe it off. Now it's just water. Okay. So you don't, you know, so you're eliminating a lot of these steps that are, you know, stuff that your your team members are breathing in and touching. Okay. Uh, so yeah, so it's. Um, it's it was tricky. It still is. I mean, we're there's not too many manual shops that do water base. Okay. So, uh, in perspective, like just going back to all made, like so last year we were fifth in sales in the U.S. Um, selling the t-shirts. Okay. Uh, we were the only shop in the top ten that were a manual shop. All the rest were all automatics. Wow. Um, so we're doing this thing that most people are kind of like, how do you do that? Um, luckily, we do one, two color prints, so it's not as like complex. Sure. Uh, but most shops don't want to print water-based manually just because it is, it's definitely a, a chore. It's harder work, um, but the quality's there. You know, it's, yeah. you, you feel our t-shirts and you don't feel a print on it. Right, um, right. Cause it's in the fabric instead of on the fabric. Yeah. yeah. Um, so it holds up better, it breathes, you don't sweat. You know, if you sweat, it actually breathes through the shirt. Right, right, okay, go ahead. Um, so yeah, and then <clears throat> just going green in general, it's the, I think most of the thing in, I would say in the area, probably in the U.S., people will think green, they think expensive. It is expensive. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm not doing it to, you know, it's not like a money-making thing. It's it's my values. You know, right. like we only have one earth, so we got to protect it and do our yeah. part to try to keep it clean. So um, almost every material in our shop, paper, toilet paper, soaps, they're all eco-friendly. Okay. Um, or recycled or bamboo or, um, you know, receipt paper. Everything's like we're, we're trying to do as much as we can. Gotcha. Um, so that kind of led into the whole B Corp situation. Okay. and. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and tell us about the so B Corps. Corps are. Um, it's not an S Corp. It's not a C Corp. It's not a tax. Uh, it's nothing tax related. It's uh, using your business for the force of good. Oh. Um, so it's very transparent. Your community, um, environmental, um, uh, and you know your staff. So you're trying to create this really amazing place to work that's making change. Mm -hmm. um, it's really hard <laughs> to get. Uh, I've been kind of working on it for a couple of years now. Okay. I think there's only two print shops in the world that have it. Okay. Uh, so it's tricky, um, but we're we're getting closer. Uh, you know, we you kind of do a survey. You go through and you have to get a certain score to be able to apply. Once you get that score, then you send it in, and then you have to show that you're doing it all. So either um, operating standard operating procedures, uh, SOPs, uh, or docu just documentation. Mm -hmm. So how are you doing these things? So how are you being environmental? How are you donating to the community? How are you treating your staff? Like, are everyone, is everyone living wage? Um, so there's this real, it's pretty complex. Sure. Um, but some B Corps are out there, Patagonia, um, Ben & Jerry's, New Belgium. Okay. Um, you know, if you go to Target, on is seventh generation all those are b corps okay uh so that's like my goal is to get to that okay. and then we're just about ready to sign up for one percent for the planet oh okay um yeah tell us a little bit so one percent for the planet it's uh this other it's not hard to do it's just costly so we'll be signing up and we'll be um legally it's very contract heavy um that we'll be donating one percent of our sales every year to the planet um so the cool thing is we get to pick where it goes um so it's for non-for-profits mm -hmm. uh there's there's nobody in Rockford that accepts it yet, so I'm trying to get that worked out before I sign up for it, because um, I want to keep the money locally. Yeah, um, I think there's some Chicago places, but it's you know it's kind of fits your whatever your your passions are. So I'm trying to look for environmental and probably homeless. Oh, okay. Um, those will be my two local entities that I'm going to try to do to donate. Okay. Um, but there's other things you can donate to, um, you know, advertising. Like if I put an ad in a paper that was advertising the good that we're doing, mm -hmm. that 
or you know like the help the community help that we're doing um that'll go towards that okay. or certain things um we're working on i don't know if you know carly rice oh, yeah. Um, yeah. so I'm, I'm working with her right now we're trying to figure out a t-shirt to start selling to help her raise funds to okay. um help her mission gotcha um you know her, her passion that she's doing okay. uh because a lot of people ask us to help, but I like to go to people that I see aren't asking for help, right. you know, that need help. Right. Um, I think it's a little more genuine, and it just makes me feel like it's the right thing to do. Right, right. Uh, so I went and visited her. I saw her operation, and I was just blown away. Oh, it's amazing. Yeah, yeah. and uh, it, it moved, you know, it really moved me. So that's something that we're working on, and that would go, I guess, towards the, you know, the 1% of the planet if we were donating money okay. to her or, okay. you know, whatever it may be. So it could, it could be, it's a variety it's of a variety of things yeah but you just pretty much have to do one percent so it's okay. total sales one percent of your total sales okay. so not gross not net it's or a girl it would be gross yeah. um so yeah so it's kind of a scary and exciting thing because you know we're not like rolling in the money um so one percent uh, of overall is a big big chunk sure yeah. um so that's why we're definitely trying to i'm hoping to be in the next couple months but we'll be the only b corp and the only one percent for the planet in rockford okay um so hopefully that kind of starts a movement where more people are interested in in getting on board sure yeah i yeah and you know it's interesting because those are a lot of the behind the scenes mm -hmm. of uh, you know because a lot of companies you know will talk about or organizations will talk about community outreach mm -hmm. and we'll be doing different types of things but what i'm hearing you say is that there's a lot of things that you've done again behind the scenes to try to make not only talk about making a difference but then living making the difference yeah it's definitely a life choice you know it's how i live my life too like i try to buy from b corps i try to buy green oriented things try to buy lo you know as local as possible um you know, it's, it has to be, you know, it's not genuine if it's just like, well, I do my business, but then when I go home, I just waste everything and, you know, I buy everything that's disposable and throw everything away. And, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it has to be full circle, right. you know, you have to, you know, do what you do, what you say. Um, cause it's, it, and it's hard, it's hard to do that. If you're doing one thing, you know, it's like you have two, all you have an alter ego, mm -hmm. um, but it's just been this, it's been a fun ride seeing other people that are passionate about it mm -hmm. um, in Rockford and mm -hmm. in the area of like, oh, you're into sustainability and you're into, you know, um, missions in Haiti, and, you know, helping that out. Uh, so it's just, it's, and it's connections, you know, right. it's meeting people through being like-minded and, and experiences. Yeah. Well, and I, and I think it goes back to what you were saying earlier is we have a choice, right? We, you know, we're all going to have, you know, be in a certain mood or whatever. And it's easy to go to negative. Yes. And I think underlying most negative is probably some sense of fear mm -hmm. that something out there is causing us to be uncomfortable. Yep. And, and and if nothing else, negativity, this, this false sense of not being vulnerable, mm -hmm. because it seems to take a greater, initially take a greater risk to be positive, mm -hmm. to, to, uh, to be life giving, to, to take that reach, even with everything you just talked about and um, but then as it becomes part of a lifestyle and you're you're integrating it in all areas of your life we talk about integrity and and when I run my men's groups we talk about how to be a man in integrity in all our affairs not just in one domain but right. at, at home at work or school in the community you know when people are watching and when people aren't watching yeah. and when we can be consistent mm -hmm. with that things flow easier and being positive is hard mm -hmm. you know because we're we're saturated and surrounded by negativity you know mm -hmm. on social media facebook mm -hmm. you're you're made to be seen a certain way or you know how you post your photos or everyone's critiquing you mm -hmm. um you know and, and i think instagram is a, a horrible thing because it's everyone it leaves fake lives mm -hmm. um as i say like People don't know what you look like behind the scenes because you have a front. Mm -hmm. You know, you have this photo that has this amazing view, and you're like, man, these look like the perfect people. Mm -hmm. But then behind the scenes, and that's, you know, with celebrities, and, you know, you see all that with suicide, and everyone's like, oh, they look great. They look like they're having a great life. Yeah. Um, but it's kind of like smoke and mirrors to me. Right. Uh, but I think that's the last couple of years have been a huge mental health thing for me of trying to stay positive because it's not easy. Mm -hmm. um, running a business is not easy. Um, 
and that's been you know like I go to KP counseling and it's amazing uh, so that's been a huge part of of my transition um, and then just having a routine you know creating a routine that's positive of meditation yoga working out um, being healthy um, just caring about what you put in your body and what you think about and it's it's been crazy yeah. like noticing the change of like oh i don't get as mad that often and things don't upset me anymore and yeah. um and it's just this lifestyle you yeah. know it's the lifestyle of if you think it you can do it and mm -hmm. um but it takes a lot of work it, it's it, it, it's not like a click a button and like oh i'm great now i'm positive and yeah. I'm, I'm feeling good yeah. uh it's definitely a you know it takes i forget what the the statistics are how many yeah. things it takes to do how many how many times it takes to do something to make it a routine sure it's like right. i don't know a couple hundred times or yeah and and i think the more that the more that you do it, but it goes back to what you said about um, discipline mm -hmm. and, and that work ethic is in being intentional about that. It, and if we do end up taking a left hand turn for, for whatever right. reason for being, then, yep, it may take two right hand turns to get back on track, yeah. but it's still doable. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's interesting, we were talking about social media and, um, you know, people will talk about the negativity and using Facebook as an, ex as an mm -hmm. example. Uh, you know all this negativity is on Facebook or, or whatever it may be and um, and I I remember noticing that on my newsfeed there was nothing negative mm -hmm. and I'm like well why is that and then I had someone that was on on my um, that I, I followed or you know whatever mm -hmm. but then they dropped off and I was wondering was well, this person not on anymore or whatever it may have been well, when I went back and looked, is that I had not liked or opened or commented um, on any of this person's stuff. Right. And however that works, the, the algorithm, yeah. yeah. However that worked, <laughs> that person's stuff was never in my newsfeed. Mm -hmm. And I wonder how much that is like in life. That, it's true. You yeah. know, that if you only are putting out. Um, life-giving or positive um, uh, out there, then that ends up being what you're going to see. It's totally, yeah. Yeah, yeah cause I, and that's and I think that's something where, uh, I guess going back to Carly Rice, is like talking to her, I was blown away by, I didn't know the prostitution and sex, tra or the human trafficking in Rockford was that big. Yeah. Um, because I'm in a I'm in this world where I'm pitching positivity, yeah. um, and I'm selling it and I'm living it, yeah. but I'm not seeing the outliers because that's not in my feed. Yeah. You know, my feed is that's a perfect example. It's like my feed's full of this good stuff, and every time I'm out, someone is wearing a shirt and they're just excited and they come talk to me. Yeah. And so I'm just that's all I'm seeing. You know, I'm not seeing someone wearing a shirt or talking about shirts and being like, oh well, Rockford has this problem going on. Right. Um, so I had to kind of go search for that. Right. Um, you know, to, and, and that's something like I want to use our base and our our name to help spread more. You know, like how can we help in certain areas and um, what can we do to help? Like we're so we're small, we're a small yeah. business, yeah. and we don't have funds to do a lot of things, but we do have the the reach of social media and right. the reach of people and community. Yeah. Um, and I think that's more powerful than money because yeah. um, once you get, you know, it's kind of creating an army. Yeah. Uh, the more people you have, the more you can do. Yeah. Well, I do think, though, one of the one of the things that Rad has done, and why I think it's been continued to grow at the rate it's grown, is because it started off with that word of mouth, almost like an underground feel. Yep. And there was that element of there was something cool about it because it wasn't a box store. It wasn't you know doing it like everyone else. And and I think that was even with some of the the sayings you had on your T-shirts mm -hmm. were were kind of edgy, kind of in you know why wouldn't you be positive about Rockford? Why and and when Brittany was on before, she talked about the eight one five story and how that came about <laughs> and uh, yeah and then and then of course where you know what blew up after that yeah. um, and of course that's we know what the story is <laughs> yeah, yeah. you can't necessarily copyright that so correct you can, you can you can copyright the story you can't copyright the can't write the, the, code. the number the name yeah so it's the the industry we're in is is very. Uh, tricky yeah. because you you know the designs that we come up with we can't trademark most of them because they're city related right um and I don't think we've ever had a problem with any of that. Like people do what they do. Yeah. Um, you know, if we get ripped off, it's fine. You yeah. know, they, it's not. It's 
on them. You know, karma karma is an interesting animal, and it yeah. it'll do its it'll do its course. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we. Uh, yeah, never, you know, the, the, just seeing, I mean, 815 is a whole other story, but yeah. just watching that blow up into what it is now in Rockford, mm-hmm. like just the pride of seeing anywhere you drive down Rockford, you can see 815 something, Yeah. Um, whether it be a, a name of an event, the name of a store, yeah. um, everything, like everything and anything, yeah. you know, like yeah. it, it created this trademark or this landmark now in Rockford where mm-hmm. 815 is bigger than Rockford, but everyone thinks it's just Rockford now. Right. Um, even 815 day, it's, well, it's Rockford. Rockford Day, yeah. um, and that's been on my. I keep trying to push. I'm like, no, it's eight one five day. It's on August fifteenth. Yeah. Um, but Rockford wants it to be Rockford Day. Right. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I've you know I let that go because it's not my. <laughs> yeah. It's too, not not for me to worry about. Um, but it's just crazy seeing how it embraced it. So you see eight one five now. Most people even traveling, they're like, oh, you're from Rockford. Yeah. And it's like, well, I could be from Dixon, or I could be from the suburbs, or I could be you know because right. eight one five is a big area code. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so it's. It's cool seeing how it, it turned into what it is. Yeah, and I think again, like it's it's one of those things. It wasn't necessarily what was ever intended. No. And, it, and yeah, it just kind of happened, and coincidentally, it was on August fifteenth, and uh, and it all just I guess the stars aligned, and yeah. and it worked out, and um, you know. I wish we could do a lot of other things in 815 and keep doing artist series, but everyone wants 815. Yeah. Yeah. So we, we give the people what they want. <laughs> sure. Well, and I think there is, and this is very much sounds like what you, what you have been doing is being in that flow. Mm-hmm. And in when you're being consistent with, with what who you are, who you want to be, what your lifestyle is in front of people and behind the scenes, you're more likely to be in that, in that flow. And, um, I've just, was just recently listening to something about being in that spiritual alignment or flow. However, Mm -hmm. and, and as you put it, the stars align and things just click and you can't really force that. Mm -hmm. Um, you can do your part and just let, just let that happen. And, and I think it's, and I kind of going back to what I think of with with Rad is that it's very much that word of mouth. Um, e- even when you guys do any type of uh, advertisement, it's and it's almost more. When I see it, it's more advertisement of an event that you're mm-hmm. um, endorsing or sponsoring or part of. And so again, it's just a way of getting the word so other people can talk about right. whatever is happening. Yeah, we created. A, I guess the thing was we created a culture. Yeah. Um, we don't. Don't pitch sales. We don't. Um, I mean, actually, this year is the first time that I've actually went out to start getting custom work sales. We've been for f- you know 15 years fully organic. Okay. You know, we'll throw 20 bucks at a Facebook ad, but we don't really spend a lot on real advertising because mm-hmm. we have such a good organic base. Mm-hmm. You know, our referrals are the best way of advertising. Yeah. Like, I could spend a thousand dollars on a TV ad, or I could sell two T-shirts to someone that's so excited about it, yeah. and they tell their family, their friends, you know, their coworkers. Um, that's got so much more value because it's genuine yeah. um, and people trust other people yeah. you know so they trust the referral being like this is the most comfortable t-shirt I've ever worn yeah. and then you're like well I want a comfortable t-shirt too right. like I want to wear the most comfortable t-shirt ever yeah. uh, and then they start learning about it and they learn the story and then that pulls them in even more because they're like I'm wearing a t-shirt that's comfortable and made change yeah. and it's made locally there's passion involved in it um, you know yeah printing manually there's a lot of blood sweat and tears in each shirt um you know there's a lot of connection the whole the whole line's just fully connected yeah um every the, all the hands that touch one t-shirt is uh, yeah i can't even i don't even know how many hands so many hands yeah, yeah. um you know that, that helped you create the the vibe the look that you're going for when you go out to you know grab a beer somewhere and um just the story you know it's 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 big well and i think that you know just like what we talked about originally is this is all about stories of transformation Mm -hmm. and sometimes it's major horrific setbacks like we've talked about you mentioned suicide or mental illness and in that element and sometimes it may just be not as um, dramatic setbacks as that maybe it's just um this didn't work out or timing or something's going on with you know within the nation Mm -hmm. and then the industry changed or whatever and and how do we persevere through that how do we you know keep working keep moving and and i think what i heard you say is this idea of trusting in um what you know you can bring to the table Mm -hmm. and then being true to 
the best you can to be true to who you are. Right. We're all going to have distractions. Mm -hmm. and, um, and then how can we be aware of that? And then if we have made a left-hand turn, what do we need to get get right at? So. Yeah. Yeah, it's definitely, um, I mean, distractions are every day. Uh, and, I, you know, I think I've personally found, like, you know, on the way here I was listening to Brain FM. Okay. Um, and it's just, like, brain waves and ambient noises, and that's kind of how I focus before stuff for, you know, like, for a big day of going meditating or, you know, there's so many apps out there and, yeah. and keeping focused. Yeah. Um, and it's the hard part, you know, like one little thing can set, you can ruin your day. Yeah. Um, but it's how do you bounce back from that? Yeah. You know, I think that's the, the most important part of all of it is even the negativity on Rockford, you know, like number one, most dangerous or whatever. It's like, okay, that's a thing, but how do we, how do we fix it? Yeah. We can complain about it, but what if you try to fix it instead of yeah. complaining about it? Right. It's way more powerful. Yeah. Um, you know, and that obviously it's, you're in the profession too. It's like, how do we make everyone happy and, yeah. and get everyone that's positive, but yeah. it's impossible. Well, it's kind of like what you talked about with, with Carly or, mm -hmm. or like even your, your boutique, your store is that, yeah, that may be true, but if you come here, it's safe. Yes. And, and if you, in, in Carly is, is in her courage and her boldness that in, in her heart that she's going to continue reaching out. Mm -hmm. And so she's not necessarily trying to, you know, I think that saying goes, not necessarily trying to change the world. She's just wanting to make sure the world doesn't change her right. or, or yourself. Right. And, and how, how to just be able to, um, be true to that. Mm -hmm. And when we have the distractions, um, what can I do to get, get right? Yeah. I agree with the idea of, um, meditating mm -hmm. and, and movement for yep. me. Um, I, I knew, know I need to exercise and, mm -hmm. and stretch and, and the, but I also to slow this down. Such a so. good thing. Yeah. I know it's the, those are things you're like, yeah, I want to exercise. I want to do this. You know, I'll do it. I'll do it next or tomorrow. But you know, it's, I think a lot of people is everything. Once you see results, you know, once you feel how good it is, yeah. um, it's very addictive, yeah. you know, to be like, Oh, I feel great. Like yeah. I can go up the stairs now. And I'm out of breath. Yeah. It's like, it feels yeah. amazing. Yeah. Well, we are, we're going to be doing another one. Um, in September, we have a suicide awareness month mm -hmm. and, and utilizing some of the things that using another artist out of the ashes event, mm -hmm. but now we're adding athletes out of the ashes. Oh, perfect. And the idea of how using athletics or using movement, how does that help transform somebody? Mm -hmm. And or using art as a platform of um, creating something, kind of right. like the whole process of learning how to um, create something through. It, it could be as elaborate as creating a t-shirt, mm -hmm. um, or it may be something smaller and just drawing or whatever. Yeah. And when Caleb was um, at Rockford University. He had taken uh, printmaking classes mm -hmm. for four um, four years um, with Menard. Oh yeah, and uh, <laughs> and learned a ton from yeah. him. You know, and, but he guy. Would, oh yeah, yeah. Sam, it sounds like a, just a great guy, yep. and I met him a couple times. But he would just put his headphones on, mm -hmm. and he would just carve. And regardless of if he was during football season, yep. uh, when he would yeah, be he's very over. focused. Yeah, he's a good he's a good one. Yeah, so it was uh, it, it was a good experience for him, mm -hmm. and um, and he's enjoyed it even after he's now graduated and and, um, and has a little uh, set that he does down in the basement yeah. at the house and stuff like that so yeah. so he uh, but just being able to create just being able to go into that that space and that of just uh, doesn't necessarily have to be for any other reason just to just to do it yeah it's a good outlet and you know we're you know the social media thing it's like getting do using your hands for you know I guess good like making something where they're I mean even going outside and planting flowers or just things that you're using your hands for that you're not in front of a TV yeah. or a computer or phone like um, nature is such a good yeah. good change in your attitude and um, and it makes you feel feel so small yeah. you know yeah. going out in nature and being like this is huge like these trees have been here for hundreds of years yep. and and they made it you yeah. know they, <laughs> they've been doing it yeah and and we can either embrace that enjoy that mm -hmm. or not even notice which yep. is almost worse than as bad as cutting them down yep. right yep. just to cut them down yeah. so so Jared as we get ready to wrap up mm -hmm. what would be you know through all the different things that you've experienced and um, what would be something that you would want the audience because a lot of times the people who are listening are just ordinary people mm -hmm. and and they want to hear stories and and of about people of how they either in business like in your case or in through a combination of uh, it and then that's entrepreneurial want yeah. to just be part what would you what would you want to um 
like don't give up. Um, you know, the entrepreneur part, and it's it's been exciting seeing younger, you know, the the millennials, I guess, because I'm right outside of that mm -hmm. tier. Sure. Um, seeing them just trying to create and mm -hmm. become something, and you know, I would say don't rush into things. Mm -hmm. um, it's not a quick quick buck. There's never a get rich quick scheme, and I don't know unless you're selling, I don't know, drugs. I don't know. Maybe that's a get rich scheme. <laughs> sure. uh, but yeah, it's it's patience. Um, enjoy the ride, mm -hmm. you know. Like uh, memories, make, try to make memories, try to make connections. Like the biggest thing that's helped me in this business was connections. Yeah. Was talking to people face to face, meeting them at events, um, being genuine, mm -hmm. um, asking questions. Um, I think that's a, that's a huge one. Like even to like my staff, I'm like ask questions. You know, to everybody, it's like you you can't grow if you don't ask questions right you can listen you can yeah. you know read a book but ask questions to people that have lived things yeah. um you know the older generation everybody it's like we've all gone through so many things and it's fun to learn stories mm. and hear about experiences because it's it's real right um so yeah i say don't give up um and positivity mm -hmm. it's been my big push lately is you know when people try to start negative i try to bump in a little positivity yeah. um or a scenario like well we woke up today yeah. it was like we're here you know we're living and and we can do so much stuff with that yeah. uh so yeah it's um i'm excited for the future i'm excited for what personally and business-wise i'm doing and and trying to do mm -hmm. uh and just you know try to grow every day yeah. well i appreciate you you know one being here on the journey because it's about transformation it's about making that choice to be healing growing moving forward and yeah there's going to be setbacks mm -hmm. yeah there's going to be stumbling blocks um, how do we learn from them how do we grow from them um you've given some great examples um and and then also taught us some things Things about some things I didn't know about B Corp and <laughs> yeah. the one percent, and those mm -hmm. are all um, I think are good things for us to learn more about. And because um, you're absolutely right, we got one planet, mm -hmm. similar to like having one body. Yep. Um, if we don't take care of it, um, yeah, you know, it's it's uh, w we have a responsibility to take care of it, our bodies as well as yes. as the it's a earth package as well. deal. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so Jared, thank you very much. Um, I know that you got uh, the upcoming season is is pretty big with yeah. uh, all the summer events you have yeah. going on. City market starts Friday and Main Street market Saturday, so yeah. it's a good kickoff to the season. Is yeah. two big events back to back. <laughs> yeah, so that'll be uh, that'll be good, and mm -hmm. hopefully the uh, you'll be able to have continued good following and. Mm -hmm. And good response. So, yeah. well, thank you very much. Yeah, thank and you. I appreciate you being on. And um, as as our events continue to going on, we'll, we'll our paths will definitely cross again. We will we'll, appreciate we'll it. Work some projects. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, thank you very much for being with us here on the journey, and uh, look forward to being with you again uh, next week.